Okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, we had talked about um, last time, options for deploying your application. Now, keep in mind, the way that I presented that might have been a little confusing. It's not like you write your application and in the end you decide, well, I'm going to deploy it this way or that way. That's part of the original design. So if, for example, you wanted to uh, go back to my old example uh, of what, what I did in the old days, I had, we had an application for field service engineers. You would define uh, one of the main things when you originally designed the application would be the deployment. Is this going to be a web app? Is this going to be a mobile app? Is this going to be a desktop app that will be deployed you know, via a jar, and so on. So this isn't like something that you decide at the very end. It's, it's something that affects how you develop the app and test it and the whole development process. So this isn't an afterthought. This is uh, an integral part of, of what your application is about. But let's say you decide you're going to do a, uh, a desktop application. Typically what you would do is you'd create a jar for it. Now, you could also create a jar if you were going to include, uh, you're going to create components for other people to use. All right? So you could include a jar. Let, let's say you were responsible for the shipping portion, the shipping calculation uh, for your organization. Your organization sold things and it shipped, you know, to different places around the world. Uh, you might make, take all of your components, unit test them, like we have, by writing code, you know, writing test classes, maybe creating a test GUI. But then you might want to deploy your classes so that people doing the other parts of the application can use them. And that gets integrated into the system testing. All right? So whether you're talking about a full-blown application or a... Uh, simply a set of components that others are going to use in their applications, uh, one way to do that would be via a JAR. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create a JAR. Uh, JAR stands for Java Archive File. And you can create it manually if you want. Uh, let's look. Let's Google how to do that. It's been a while. It's not particularly hard. And you can create it from the command line. And here's the instructions to do. Yeah, this that shows you the information, but it isn't very thorough. All right, first of all, to create a runnable jar, remember one of our classes has to have a main method in it. All right? In our case, usually that was either the GUI or it was the unit test. You can create a jar doing this. Uh, create a jar doing this. So what this command did is this compiled everything and put everything in a folder called com, I don't know what that word is, jar.classes. Then you can archive the files together with jar, cf, c stands for create, and so on. You have to then supply a manifest file. 
And a manifest file says which class has the main class in it. The other thing you'll notice with this is we, we're going to create a package uh, for this. So our code is going to be put in packages. Packages are just a way of grouping classes together sort of in a conceptual unit. So you could have all your classes for an application together, or you could have parts of the application in separate uh, packages. And then they, would, uh, they could be created into a jar. I'm not finding any really good set of instructions. This shows compiling. You can do it manually is the bottom line. And if you need to, you can Google it and find out. Uh, you can also use any number of IDEs. Now, we have not used IDEs in this class. And again, my reasoning for doing that is when people use IDEs, oftentimes, in my opinion, they don't really learn the language really well. They learn how to use the IDE. And I think it's important to really learn and know the language on a nuts and bolts level before you then take on to use an IDE. So because of that, uh, we've just coded everything just using simple text editors. All right? But there are IDEs. And there's a number of common ones. Eclipse is one. NetBeans is another. And there's IntelliJ and a lot of other ones as well. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a We'll go and create a, uh, take the code that we have in one of our examples. And bring it into an IDE, and then we're going to create a jar for it. This is your last assignment to do this. And... I think I say use lab 12. Well, if you didn't complete lab 12 and you want to do this, use an earlier lab. All right, so I'm just going to download some sample code from an earlier point in the class. Let's download this one. And I'm going to unzip it. All right. So. We have this. I'm going to make sure that it works, because I'd hate to waste my time with something that didn't work. So let me go to the command line. It doesn't work. I'm glad I didn't do that. I'm just going to go and remove this line from my unit test. Line 66. I should be able to run it. And there we go. All right. So we have code that works. I'm going to go into Apache NetBeans. This is an IDE, and you can use it to create uh, JSP and also create uh, Java servlets as well. But well, we're going to use a more straightforward 
version of it and just create a plain old Java application. But then we're going to generate a jar and we're going to generate um, Java docs as well. All right. So I'm going to go up here and say new project. I'm going to pick Java with Ant. And I'm going to pick Java application. And I'm going to hit next. It's actually going to need to install a component. So I'm going to click download and activate. And next, agree and install. The way this works is, since you can do so much kind of development using NetBeans, when you download it, you don't get everything that it can do. Because you might only do a small portion of it. You might only work on Java applications, for example and not do anything related to the Java web, or vice versa. So it doesn't download everything. You have to pick the components that you want to do, and, and it will download it. So I'll click Finish here. It's going to do its thing. If you were to download NetBeans on your machine, you'd only need to do this once. Unfortunately, the way the machines reset themselves would have to do it multiple times every time we reboot the machine. This is putting it and notice where it's putting it. It's putting it in users, documents, NetBeans project, and we give it a name. I'll call it pizza because that's what we've been doing. I'm going to click finish, and it will create my project. Now since I already have my code, I developed it outside of NetBeans. I can just bring in my code. So here's my project. I expand it, I could go to source packages, and this is the default package. I'm going to right mouse and create a new package. Typically packages use what's called a reverse URL uh, approach. So the URL for Lorain County Community College is www.lorainccc.edu. Typically, for a package name, you would do that in reverse. So whatever your organization's domain was, you'd do com. Dot, or in our case, edu.lorainccc.cis226 or something like that. The only purpose for doing this is if you do it that way, you can pretty well guarantee that your package names are going to be unique worldwide. Because if people stick to this naming convention, that will ensure that. So I'm going to call this package edu.lorainccc.zellers.pizza. Oops. So that's going to create a package. And I can go and I can copy my code that I've already developed into that. So here's my code. 
I'm going to copy the Java classes into my package. So I just slide that over and put it into the package. And there they are. Now, the other thing I have to do is I have to put the name of the package on top of the class. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to open up each of these and I'm going to put as the very first line the package in which these belong, which is package edu Lorraine CCC dot Zellers dot pizza. And I'm going to put that in every one of my classes. That's simply telling it what package uh, these things live in. Very first line. Save all. Now I can test this by clicking run. And I have to say where the main, where is the main class, where is the class that has the main method. And it is this one, the unit test, so I click OK. To go and do its thing, to compile everything and run it. And there's the output, just like we have done before, but instead of doing it in the command line, it runs it in within the IDE and gives you the results down there. Okay, so I can test this. I can make sure everything's correct and so on, and then I can actually go and make a package out of this. So uh, I can go and say... under run, I can say build. All right? And what build is going to do is it is going to actually create a jar for us. So I'm going to click OK. Or actually, I'm going to click clean and build. Now go through, do its thing, and it's actually going to create a jar for us. And if I look for it, the jar will be documents, NetBean projects, pizza, dist. And there it is, the pizza jar. So I can actually go and run that jar. and it goes and runs that. Okay? So it compiled everything into the jar. If you notice, the other things it does is under build, it generates the compiled classes in their proper packages. So the folders correspond to the points in the package. All right? So that's how you can create a jar. All right. Now, how do you create Java docs? We've been looking at Java docs throughout the semester because Java docs are the format that your basic Java documentation is in. So if I type in Java docs array list, I see this which has information about that class. It shows what package it belongs to, what it inherits, 
what subclasses there are, what interfaces it implements, what fields are included in it, what constructors, and what methods. And it's all done in a very specific format. Well, keep in mind, when you develop Java classes and Java components, most often you're developing them not just for you to use, but for other people to use as well. So it's great to provide the people that are going to be using this with documentation about your classes. So we can actually go in here and we can generate Javadoc for all of the apps or for all the classes within our application. And we can do better than that because we can go in and we can put little pieces of explanation like comments. And those comments will be included in the Java doc. So if I do this and I say this function is used to set the size of pizza, its values are S M L. I can put that comma in and by formatting it this way, it's going to take this and it's going to include it in the Java docs. So if I go up here and say under run, generate Java doc, it's going to go do its thing. And it's going to show us all the different classes in our application. There's a delivery order. It is part of the package EDU Lorraine CCC Zeller's order uh, uh, pizza, and it inherits from order. Here is a list of the fields. Here is a list of constructors. Here is a list of methods. And if you notice, the one that I put comments on top of, set size, it includes my comments as part of the Java doc. So this is a nice way that without doing much, other than writing your code and commenting it correctly, you can go in and you can create very professional uh, documentation for other people who are going to come and use your classes later on. All right, so that's pretty cool. Questions about this? No, no, uh, most of the IDEs do it. Java Docs is like a standard, so like if you, Eclipse is the other popular one, so Eclipse would do this. I, I would think all the IDEs that do Java would generate Java Docs like this. Let's take another example that I have been working on, or rather that we have been working on this semester. Let's go on later on in the semester where we had GUIs.
Okay, here's one we had. We had the high-low game and the test for that. I'm going to bring this in, but I'm actually going to break, make actually a couple of different packages for this. So I'm going to close out of this. I didn't want to close out of that. So I'll open it back up. I'm going to actually put these in different packages. I'm going to put dice in a package for dice. And in there, if we were a game company and we had dice with multiple sides, we could put ancestors of the dice class. I'm going to put the two test files in their own package. And then I'm going to put the high-low game and high low, uh, I'm going to put the high low game uh, logic in one. And I'm going to put the GUI logic in another. So I'm just going to make several classes, is the bottom line. We'll actually forget about the test class. Still thinking how I want to divide the packages. I'll put the GUI in one thing and the rest in another. So I'll do new project. And I want Java with Ant, Java application. High, low. All right, I'm going to create a package, and I'll call it again edu, Lorraine CCC, dot Zellers, game. And I'll create another package that says edu. Lorraine CCC, Sellers, uh, GUI. And I'm going to put the GUI stuff in one folder, and I'm going to put the non GUI stuff in another folder. So I'm going to put Dice and high low game. I'm going to put in the game package. And high low GUI, I'm going to put in the GUI package. Now, I have to go and add the package to each of these, to all the classes. Now, if I go in here and look, Notice it doesn't know where the high-low game is. It was giving me an error a second ago. All right. It was giving me an error because it's not in the same package anymore that it used to be in. So I have to assign a package to it. So I'm going to assign a package to this. Package. EDU, Lorraine CCC, 
sellers, PUI. Now, it doesn't know what high-low game is because it's in the other package. Classes can recognize other classes within their package. It cannot recognize a class outside of their package. So what do we do? We have to import that. So I'm going to say import edu Lorraine CCC Zellers dot game dot what's the name of it? High low game. Which it doesn't like because I have to go on high low game and assign the package to it. So now I should be all set. Save everything. Now it knows that, it can import it, and I can run it. So if I run it, this is the one with us with the main class, or the main method, so I pick that. And when I run that, it's going to pop up the GUI. Oh. Got some errors. Okay, erroneous tree type. Oh, I have to put a package on this guy too. I didn't think I had to, but maybe I do. That's okay. That's just the name of the package. That's not the name of the package doesn't have to match that.
Okay, there we go. I, sometimes if there's an issue, if you, if you go and clean it, it gets rid of old files and weird occurrences. So here it goes, and we have that. And what we could do then is we look at the jar, which would be under Documents, NetBean Projects, ILO Game, Dist. You'll see you have one jar for that, which you could distribute to someone. And you could run it. And then you can run it that way. So everything gets compiled into that. Now you could distribute multiple applications. If your some of your code used other people's jars, you could include other people's jars. You could add other people's jars to your application simply by going right mouse. Uh, where would that be? Yeah, right mouse, add library, and you could add if someone else had done the dice object, for example. Yes? Yes. It's a, it's a compiled and compressed version. So all the Java class files sort of get compiled and smashed together in the jar for your application. And then we could go in and I could create Java docs for this. which it shows me the two packages that are in here. I could look at each package and then details about it. So if I provided my jar, you know, let's, let's think again in a bigger context. Maybe I would create uh, a jar that had uh, um, dice in it, you know, regular dice, 20-sided dice, and so on down the line. I could create a jar just for that and make it distributable to other people in my development team and they could include my jar when they go to compile and my Java docs would tell them how to use the classes in my jar, what the object names were, what the package names were, and so on. All right, questions about this? Your next assignment is to generate a jar in Java docs for that. My suggestion would be to use uh, NetBeans to do that. All right, that's all I had for today. We'll see you up in Lamb.